how many people in the audience here are users of adhesive tape? Many of you. Okay, so uh, I think you'll enjoy this presentation. I'll start with just some high-level objectives on the components of a pressure-sensitive tape. And then we'll go into what makes an electrically insulating pressure sensitive tape different than, let's say, a packaging tape. I'll explain the fundamental properties for electrical tapes, go through some key applications so you can understand the considerations for how do I choose the right tape for my application. And then, of course, where you can learn more. So you see the construction here. You have a pressure sensitive tape, which is um, adhesive on the inside, a backing. Um, and there's other components that go into this in the manufacturing, such as a prime that prepares the substrate for anchoring the adhesive to it. There's also release coatings on the outside, which controls your unwind force or printability of a tape. A pressure-sensitive adhesive is a polymeric material. Um, and if you think of something like angel hair pasta, it's units of molecules bonded together in a chain. And viscoelastic properties, that's solid and liquid-like behaviors, depending on the time and temperature that they're exposed to. So a PSA is a polymeric material in a viscoelastic state. Examples of these include rubber, silicone, adhesive. Now the backing, that's the support or the body of the tape. Backings can be reinforced, where you might laminate two layers together, or have glass filaments reinforced to enhance that performance. Examples can include polyester, glass cloth, polyimides, and many others. So the performance of a tape, it can be described based on the backing alone, the adhesive alone, and a combination of the two together. And what makes the electrically insulating pressure sensitive tapes different than a packaging tape? Well, there's many considerations. So you have the assembly in electrical equipment. Maybe you have to put high tensile stress on that tape during your winding application. Or maybe you have to combine with other materials, such as a varnish, that goes through different curing processes. So the tape must be compatible and withstand those processes. Then you have the operational stresses of your electrical equipment. It can be categorized into dielectric stress, um, mechanical stress, such as vibrating components, thermal applications where you have higher temperatures of the electrical equipment, um, and the chemical considerations for compatibility, whether it's with oil or the varnishes that you combine in your electrical equipment. And then this isn't just operating for a few hours, it's many years of life that need to be guaranteed. So the fundamental properties used to describe the pressure sensitive tapes they are a measure of the ability of the tape to withstand the assembly and the um, operational criteria for the equipment. So you'll see in your folders, hopefully everyone has one at their seat, there's an 11 by 17 chart in there. And this describes all of the fundamental properties for adhesive tapes. And it's categorized by your backing, adhesive, and your combination. So for example, the backing, um, Properties could be things like your dielectric strength, the tensile and elongation of your tape, um, the abrasion resistance, puncture and tear, and also the absorption of that backing. The adhesive part focuses primarily on that peel adhesion, the bond that the tape forms, as well as chemical compatibility, which is primarily due to the adhesive. The backing tends to be more inert. And then the combined properties, which include thermal class, the color of the tape, and the overall thickness. And on, on the back side of your chart, you'll see that there's a range of products for this industry and compares all those fundamental properties across uh, using a scale to compare them. So I'll dive into a few of these fundamentals. And of course, there's room to learn more where we have uh, at the end, I'll share how you can learn more. Dielectric strength, this is the industry term for electrical insulation. It can be referred to as breakdown voltage in kilovolts, maybe kilovolts per inch, such as the thickness of the tape. Um, and the ASTM standard D1000 is meant for pressure sensitive tapes to test a number of properties, including dielectric strength. And you can see all of the common materials listed here, air being a very poor insulator. And as you progress through the various types of backings, like paper, glass cloth, all the way up through mica used for high voltage insulation. But what I have here are common backings for PSA tapes. 
So like a polyester, polyimid uh, being a higher dielectric strength, and a glass cloth tends to be lower in terms of dielectric performance. The next fundamental, tensile strength, this is the force required to break a tape when you pull in opposite directions. This can be referred to as breaking strength. On data sheets, you'll see it in newtons per centimeter of force per unit width. So the ASTM standard, the same standard, details the rate at which you pull apart, the one inch wide sample that's used. So you can compare tapes across the board um, as, as a comparison of their quality and performance. And the reason this is important in electrical applications, for tensile strength in many applications, you need to put high, high stress on that tape during winding to eliminate air gaps. And if you remember from the first fundamental dielectric strength, air is a very poor insulator. So if you have air gaps or wrinkles in your windings, there will be arcing and sparking and degradation of the surrounding equipment over time. So these same four products compared for the dielectric strength before now compare the tensile strength. So the films like the polyester and polyimid, they're more stretchy. They have high elongation and low tensile strength. A glass cloth will improve your tensile strength but even more so, the glass filaments added to a polyester will give you some of the most superior tensile strength products at a very competitive cost. So peel adhesion. This is um, the strength of the bond between the tape and the surface that it's applied to, measured in force per unit width. Um, the ASTM standard, the same reference here, um, is very particular in that it references the bond to steel. And that's really important to consider when you're looking at data sheets or trying to compare one tape to another. You want to understand what your application is and what you're bonding to because you may receive different answers. Um, this is important because in your application, a lot of people think of the thumb test when they look at a tape. What's the quick stick? But tack is very different than peel adhesion. So peel adhesion is that bond that it forms over time. And it can be up to 72 hours before a PSA tape will maximize its peel adhesion. And you see here they have um, the steel panel and the tape being pulled at a 90 degree angle. That test angle is also an important consideration. So, so, um, and, and the time that you wait after applying the tape to the panel will give you different results if you wait five minutes versus 20 minutes. So the key takeaway there is to perform the test under the same conditions, and you will get results that you can compare across different products. Now here, the same four products compared, but focusing on the adhesive component, you can see there's a rubber adhesive, um, which is more middle of the road. It's very sticky, like if you think of a lint roller, but it's not the ultimate bonding um, solution, whereas an acrylic will give you the highest bond. A silicone tends to have lower bond strength. Now thermal class. This is a fundamental related both to the backing and the adhesive. It's an industry term that specifies the performance level by thermal aging. There's a maximum temperature for a specified amount of life. And there's test programs that determine what your thermal class is. So this is where you get into all of the UL considerations for many of you as end users. You may have test programs defined by the end product. That will give you some type of thermal class, let's say class A, 105C. Um, the system, this is more when you think of UL 1446 and the sealed tube test, where you can combine the tape with many other components. And that's giving you a thermal class for that system of components. And then last, the insulation materials, that's the tape by itself, um, UL 510, where you can get a thermal class for that tape by itself. And this is important for many end users because thermal aging can be the most common cause for degradation of uh, the design performance. Here you have the same four products where you can see the higher temperature polyimid paired with a high temperature adhesive, such as a silicone, will give you class 180 or class H. And the glass cloth with silicone will achieve the same thermal class. If you pair a polyester with an acrylic, you can get class F, 155C, whereas the lower performance adhesive, such as a rubber, with a polyester will give you class A. I'm sorry, class B, 130C. So here you see a table with um, all of the four products that were referenced throughout the fundamental overview. Um, 
a polyester with a rubber adhesive. It may give you good dielectric strength coming from the polyester, but your thermal class is on the lower end comparatively. If you bump up to a polyimide with a silicone, you increase that dielectric strength and the thermal capability of the product. And then the glass cloth product with silicone will give you a higher tensile strength compared to a film. And then in the last column, the polyester reinforced with glass filaments, you can see that achieves higher properties in most categories and is a very popular tape in coil winding applications. So the fundamental properties are always a trade-off. And it really depends on your application needs that will dictate which tape is best. So now I'll take you through some example applications. If you're holding or banding layers in coil winding operations, high tensile strength is likely the most important feature. When you couple that with the thermal class requirements for the application, you might end up going with something like class 155 or below using the glass filament reinforced polyester. It's a value product with high performance. If you have class 180, you would then be moved into the next category where you use a glass cloth with a silicone adhesive. Now on the other hand, an application such as wrapping the phase insulation in the end winding of a motor or a generator, or the outer wrap in toroidal coils. Conformability is important here, so lower tensile strength would be ideal for these type of applications. You want to be able to wrap around unique geometries and have a smooth surface. And then of course, depending on the thermal class of the application, you might choose for class 130 or below, the polyester with rubber adhesive. If it's class 180, polyimide with silicone adhesive would be a good choice there. And there's many other applications um, that can be categorized into these buckets. So a liquid transformer, you may want to look at oil compatibility with the tape. How well does the backing of the tape absorb that oil? How well is the adhesive on that tape compatible in that oil? The dry transformers, you may want to look at resin compatibility and absorption. Toroidal transformers, maybe the color of the tape is important if it's exposed on the outside. Black is very popular there. So if you want to learn more about how to choose the right tape for your application, uh, my colleague will scan your badge as you exit the session. Um, if you choose to exit in between, she'll be sure to catch you. We can follow up with uh, electronic brochure. Uh, we have a deeper dive training that goes into all of the fundamentals. Um, it's an electronic course you can take and receive a certificate at the end after taking a test to quiz your knowledge. Um, and we can also connect you with a resource that can help you how to choose the right tape for your applications. So now I'm open to any questions. I think I have some time here. Any questions? Afterwards, I will be sure to go over to the networking session. So if you want to stop by, ask me any questions, feel free. Thank you all for your time.